Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bob Moffitt. Welcome to Let's Weld Something. We're in Chicago, Illinois. We're going to visit Elgin Sweeper. I don't know if you're familiar with Elgin Sweeper. Over 100 years, Elgin's producing street sweepers, products for commercial, residential, racing. We get to go in and learn their processes and see some, some uh, material handling applications. Jeff, tell us how this company got started. Tell us the history, a brief history about the Elgin Sweeper Company. Okay, so we're 108 years old. Uh, we started the company back in 1914. First street sweeper was uh, was built for a customer out of Boise, Idaho. Why? Is it just, uh, just the customer came, just contacted and wanted that, or is there so, something yeah, particular so the, about I, Boise? So from what I know, that was a long time ago. From what I know, the customer, you know, they needed some way to be able to clean up, you know, debris off of their streets. And so they needed, they need, you know, someone needed to come up with a, with a, a concept to be able to, you know, streets, uh, you know, sweep debris off of their streets. Interesting. Always, you know, that's one of those questions, you know, is there, is there something unique or particular about why that happened or how that happened and you know you hear about companies that start on a napkin sure yeah the idea right, the idea. idea is on a bar napkin and yeah. i mean goes worldwide and highly lucrative so you always ask that question you know how, how and why why did that why is it that way so yeah. uh always been in this area always been yep we've in always elgin, been in the elgin Illinois? area yeah we've always been elgin uh that's the name elgin street sweeper uh, so they've built, yeah, they built everything here. Yeah, we used to bring stuff in off of, we, we had a rail, uh, rail system that was attached to the building. Mm -hmm. um, so when the street sweepers would get done, they'd load them on rail cars, and then the rail cars would take them off to, you know, where they were going. Well, let's go do a tour. We'll walk through the facility and see your processes in. Okay, sounds good. Let's go. All right. We have a huge welding department, so what I'll do is uh, we'll start at the beginning of the process and then just start working our way down the entire plant. So we'll start over here. First thing that happens here is uh, we've got our, our sheet steel that comes in. Uh, I've got about 15 different sizes of sheet steel that come in, and then uh, you know we've got uh, three lasers that we that we run all of our sheet steel in. Uh, one fiber laser, two CO2 lasers. Uh, I've got about six operators that run these lasers. Uh, you know, and then they ship stuff over to uh, you know our brake presses where we have four of them. Uh, this cells we call is our gateway cell. This is all our fabrication. Uh, you know, coming from raw steel to a corn part. You bring in raw coils off truck? Uh, not coil, but it's, it's just They're uh, sheet? sheet steel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Four brake presses, uh, all Cincinnati brake presses. Um, different different strokes for, uh, well, this one's different stroke than, than both of these as well. And we've got a small electric version of the, uh, of the Cincinnati brake press that we do as well. Um, they form probably about 90 to 95% of our parts that we have. Uh, all of our manufactured parts at least form, form about 90 to 95% of those parts. Base material uh, is plain carbon steel? Yep, not yep, thing yeah, yeah, all mild. Yeah, we, we do some stainless steel, no exotic metals, no aluminum, no, uh, you know, nothing nothing exotic at all. Uh, all, all. Most of it's, about 90% of it uh, is our MIG, uh, uh, or not MIG, our, uh, our sheet steel mild steel that we have. Next area we have is we have a, we have a machining center. Uh, so we, we go see the machining center. Uh, part of the machining center is we do have one saw that cuts all of our tubes, uh, which we'll see in a little while when we come down uh, through all these aisles. So you'll be able to see that as well. Uh, but we can go check out the, uh, the uh, machining center now. And then I can walk you extensively through all of our welding cells so you can see what, uh, what welding we have here. This is our machining center. Uh, we got three machines, Mazak, Takasawa, and then the older one. I'm not sure exactly which one that is. Uh, so we don't, do a, we don't do a lot of machining. We don't have huge centers here. They do small, uh, small parts in this area, not high volume. We don't, we don't run you know, 30, 40, 50 parts. It's, it's more like one, two, five, 10 parts at a time that these guys run. So. Uh, you know, pretty small, pretty small for a machining center in, in manufacturing. Um, again, we've got about uh, five five employees that run this on two shifts. It's more like a drill a hole, prep them, prep an end or something like that. It's not. Yeah, so we do. We do. They do. A, they do prep a lot of stuff that actually goes over into our weld. We're not doing a lot of milling or sizing or anything. Uh, they do. They do some milling. Uh, 
a little bit of sizing, uh, drilling a lot of holes uh, for our weld mitts that are, that are going downstream as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's not too too extensive. I mean, our Takasawa does a little more more in depth uh, work than the, than the other guys do. Um, so we do bending uh, rod rod bending as well, straightening of parts um, over here. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of different machining you know operations within the uh, uh, within the organization here. Okay, so our welding department's pretty pretty big. Uh, we've got about uh, between 40 and 50 weld cells uh, in the area. Um, so we've got three, uh, I'm sorry, we've got two robots uh, right now uh, running. Uh, we have a supercell, uh, which is a lot of our smaller piece parts. So brand new welders, usually we bring a brand new welder in, especially if it's one directly out of school. Uh, we'll start them on the smaller stuff here. Uh, so again, six weld cells. We got about 12 welders that weld in these cells. Uh, between both of our shifts, uh, you know, any of these smaller parts that you see, they're 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 welding a lot of smaller stuff for us. A lot of this is MIG, um, and you know, they're going to be uh, uh, not a lot of not a lot of stainless steel here. Maybe a little bit, but but not not too much. So uh, these guys are running thousands of parts uh, a week out of here. It's usually not the same part over and over and over again. There's a lot of variation. Uh, to our sweepers, so these guys are running, uh, you know, different variations, different lot sizes, uh, and then, uh, you know, they can they can weld one thing up to, you know, look like 30 or 40 pieces at one time that they're that they're going to be welding as well. Uh, so these guys are, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, high run, uh, lots of volume out of here on a daily basis. Um, Oh, strictly 045 wire, 035 wire for uh, a lot of a lot of 35. Uh, we do run 45 as well. 35 is our main one, but uh, 445 as well. We uh, uh, we do run some of that. 045 is predominantly used in heavy manufacturing, but generally with a spray transfer. Yeah. And the spray there's there's four uh, four methods or four modes of metal transfer. The short arc being the coolest, you know, for small thin parts or thinner parts. Yeah. Uh, globular, which I hate, can't stand it. Yep. Chucking BBs after that, you know, cleaning everything. We do, up. yeah, we do. And do if you go to globular, of... you might as well change gas and go to the spray. Uh -huh. And then there's pulse spray. Yep. Pulse, less heat input, but flying down through there clean. Yeah, we do some pulse welding. We do some rapid X. So this is our newest. This is our newest area that we have. Uh, so we, the way we used to build these these uh, <laughs> what we call hoppers here uh, is we used to have a one fixture and we build the whole thing on this one fixture. A lot of clamps, uh, a lot of measuring, um, and so we invested some of our capital into kind of almost running this like an assembly line here now. So you know they start off and with the form parts down to the end down here, and we work our way now down into a spin out. Uh, we took into a lot of uh, like ergonomics for the guys. The guys used to be on their knees all the time, laying on their back welding these things. Uh, they don't have to anymore. So uh, you know our, once we finish tack uh, the part here. We throw it in a spin out. These guys are able to stand the whole time for the most part. Finish components and moving them. Yeah, so yeah, so this is our final weld for this. So what they do is, you know, once they finish tack this, we flip it over. This thing's built upside down from the from the uh, from the start to uh, our tack weld. Once we get into final weld for this thing, we we throw it in the uh, the fixture here. Uh, this thing spins every which way. The guy stands there the whole time. We don't have to do vertical downs on it anymore. Uh, so these guys are just doing straight line welding for you know flat horizontal, flat horizontal right for this whole thing. This is this has uh, been a huge time saver for one. Uh, it used to take us about uh, 30 35 hours to weld this uh, specific weld mitt. Uh, probably down to between 15 and 20 hours now. Uh, so we're getting one of these at least one of these out a day. Uh, you know just by just by transforming everything basically into its own assembly line for for these guys as well. We basically have two two lines here. So um, these are one of our air air products. That's our regenerative air product. And so, you know, we, we basically mirrored what we did on this side over on this side as well. So this this fixture actually can support, you know, both both of our uh, our different type of uh, air hoppers that we run here. So um, this, you know. that's the, this is the main hopper. This holds all the yep. all the poop, yep. all yep. the stuff. Yeah, this is one of three three main ones that we have. So. Uh, so we got we got this guy, we've got uh, uh, this guy as well, which is the same thing over here. Comes from a different line, and then uh, I'll take you by the other area where we have uh, where we have a smaller version. <clears> of is this material different, or is it just pickled mild steel? Uh, 
got mild steel, but this is stainless, stainless. steel. This is a stainless steel hopper here, and then mild steel. So those are the only two, you know, two types that we do. When we get down to the assembly line, you'll see we've got a four wheel line, which is a chassis that we purchased, build the street sweeper on the back of it. Um, our Pelican, which is the bread and butter of our company, um, we build the chassis in house and then build the sweeper on top of the chassis that we built. This is kind of like our, ch our chassis line here. Uh, you know, we started we started down here with sub with sub weldments, and then we, we kind of piece it together as an assembly line again. And then we got the same version of a spin out almost, but for the chassis here. Is this is this the three wheel model that this I'm familiar with? Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is the three wheel model yeah. uh, that the company was was founded on. Uh, so, and then we'll see when, when we go to paint. I think they have one in there that's getting ready to get painted, so you can see the process of after it gets uh, you know welded. Where does it go from there? What processes do we do to get it over the assembly line? Yeah, so... Uh, lasers, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, lasers don't have the inherent swirl that plasma does, right? Right, I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, just yeah, no, no. cut straight through. So straight if we're through. doing a tube yes. yep. or shaft like this right here, then we'd go pretty hard line dimension and not worry about anything. Yes, yep, yep, really hard. We've got into that. We always got into that uh, the thicker the material because of the swirl and the, the beveling effect of plasma. You know, you want an internal fit, you know, where do you want that? Had, had, made, had to pay attention to the direction of travel when you cut those holes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, those, I felt that and it's got a little bit of a, a mismatch, but that's okay. Yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff with the holes is coming out of our machining shop. They're, they're the ones that are, you know, making sure everything's lined up and uh, the lasers will cut you know, some of the holes out, but a lot of the stuff gets done in our machine shop. Like that. I mean, that starts and stops. Yeah. There's always going to be that little, that little ding in there that doesn't get completed. And all it takes is a stroke of the file, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This is a fan housing. One of the fan housing for uh, one of our air products line. That's a, that's a robotic weld? Uh, yes. Is that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this one's done on, on robots, and we'll walk by there here shortly. You know, here's a finished chassis for the Pelican, uh, ready for paint. Uh, good looking, you know. I've, I've seen these for years and years. You know, you just never get to never get to see how they're made. That's what's fascinating. It is fascinating. I like yeah. to watch that show, how it's made. Yeah. I mean, I learned so much cool stuff off of that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Ooh. Plug well. Yeah. I don't see a whole lot, you know, the, like a, a slot that's cut and two pieces of sandwich together. Yeah. Have you, have the engineers, they considered that, I wondered, or? Uh, you know, with plug welding, I, I, we do have some, on some of the parts we use, we use some of the plug welding, but, uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you which ones have it, which ones don't. For the most part, I mean, it looks like it's not that far away from a major area of intersection, but I've, I've seen a lot of companies that, and they rely. Yeah. They rely on plugs a lot of times. A lot of them, yeah. 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 It's yeah. still a fillet weld. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a different, yeah. different place. To, yeah. You know, I took a lot of classes in uh, statics and strength, strength of material. We got to tear stuff up. That's, okay. where, that's where you really learn and appreciate yeah. tensile strengths and doing the pulls and the bend testing and compression. And that's where you really... I, in my opinion, I think every welder should go through something like that. Sure. And then they get to know about, you know, why why it's weak or why it failed or something. So these are our robot, one of our robot welders here, and then we've got one right down over here. Uh, so these guys are doing a lot of fan housing for us. Uh, some lift arms, which lift some of the hoppers up off the ground. All right. Uh, so, still use them uh, hydraulic tanks. Uh, they do a lot of a, a lot of uh, hydraulic tanks for us. Uh, so again, two shifts, uh, four robot operators, and then we got two robot programmers that are programming parts for us. Uh, you know, on a daily basis, and then when a robot's acting up, they're fixing whatever the issue is. That's the one I was looking at from the distance. So you got the pad done in a two-pass weld. No, yeah. it's a one-pass one weld. Yeah. And then you got the tube to the pad in a two-pass two. weld. Yep. Uh, 
filling in the. There must be a. Is there a pretty good gap in between the tube and the pad? There is. Yeah. That's why yeah. the. That's why the profile looks the way it looks. Yeah. Nice though. I mean that. You know. That's a lot of time right there. Yeah. That's a lot of time. The part being up there the way it's so situated. Somebody doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah, want to do it. He builds all those over here. Just got yeah. He's building one right now. In fact. This is the uh, start of the Pelican line. Uh, so again, bread and butter of the company. It's what we started on. And as we walk down, you'll be able to see, you know, the escalation of the assembly into uh, into uh, it becoming a, a street sweeper. Because you got people that in assembly that have done this. People that what? They've done this. They know the they know oh, the part yeah. oh, inside yeah. now. Yeah. We uh, you know we we've got employees that have been here 30, 35 years. Uh, you know, down on this end of the plant, it's, uh, yeah, they, they, they could, uh, they could probably build a three sweeper with their eyes closed. They've done it so many times. We've got a couple different models for this. We got a waterless, uh, you know, three sweeper. I saw um, that on your, uh, on your website. Yeah. What, tell me about the waterless technology. What so it just doesn't. It, so it's not that it doesn't use any water. It does use water, but it, it sucks it right back. Re, up. It's reclaimed back yeah, in its yeah, own. Yeah, it's reclaimed back okay. in its own in its own system. Um, wow. Yeah, most, most you can start to see it starting starting to form together from just a blank chassis. What's the main? Uh, what's the motor? What do you use? Uh, diesel. D uh, diesel. Yep. Four cylinder Perkins or uh, four cylinder. Is there any particular brand that we've? Elgin has stayed with over the Sean years. Deere. Okay. John Deere, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. Uh, we do have some new, you know, we've got some new technology coming out. We're doing a, we've got a hybrid Pelican that we're testing right now, which is um, half electric, half, uh, uh, you know, engine. Uh, so we're, we're, we're trying to, uh, you know, transfer our, our, some of our models over into, uh, you know, more electric versions. How much does a brush cost? I want to know how much does the brush cost. You know, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure the cost. I'm guessing it's a lot of money. I mean, yeah, oh sure, yeah, yeah. And I'm, the technology, like that? Yeah, and I'm, the technology, and that alone. Yeah. See, that's that's the stuff that yeah, I'm always asking it's questions about. Probably a couple thousand dollars, please. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. Yeah, yeah. So, and they've got they've got you know we we've got on both of them we do have a main room that we have on both of them main room on this one's directly underneath it also has side rooms. You know, yep. on the side that, that, that bring everything to the in, center, yeah, and then it sucks it up onto the conveyor and then that's, into the hopper. That's what I always watch as a little kid. I was wondering, yeah, why well, is he? He's too far away from the curb. How's right. he gonna do that? You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm reading, uh, like on a racetrack, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do stock car or whatever the, the NASCAR, yeah, do you sell a particular model? Is it modified in order to go out and do the tracks? Yeah, because it's running on a slow speed. And those are some big old banks on there. So what do we do to keep the sweeper intact on a racetrack? So we kind of weights or you, you don't have to tell me if you can't answer. Just tell no, me. No, no, no. So we, we have. Uh, so you're talking about the high high banks on high the racetrack. High banks on yeah. Yeah. So we we have some new. So you know we partner with NASCAR. Okay. Uh, and if you watch if you watch any NASCAR race, you'll see us out there whenever there's a wreck. If once they pan out to the to the track, right. back, you're going to see an LG Sweet Sweeper I, I really, yeah. coming by. Yep. So we actually have some new ones that we're building right now. Uh, that uh, I think one of them might be on property now. Uh, we we might be able to take a look at, and you can see whatever the customer needs. You know, they'll 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 when they when they're purchasing a Sweet Sweeper, they'll tell us if we can do it, we'll do it for a customer. Yeah. 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 There's so there's he, lots of specials and and you know altercations that we can do to the sweeper to help with whatever. Whatever you know, function they're using that sweeper for, whether it's construction, highway, city, uh, you know, any municipality that needs it for whatever reason. environment. Yeah, whatever the environment you might, is, you know. You know, I mean, you're sending some to the desert. Are they different than ones you'd send to Florida yeah. or you know? Yeah, sure. If 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 that customer requires something special on it, we'll you know we'll we'll do it. Great. This is our other line, even though it's three lines now. Uh, so we do our air products here. Uh, the line starts down there, and then you can see the evolution of the sweeper getting built. Again, all of these on our four-wheel line are built on a chassis. So the chassis is purchased, and then we build, you know, they come in with our specs on them uh, the way we need to be able to build a sweeper on the back of it. And then, you know, we build we build the sweeper on the back of this thing, and it's in conjunction with the, uh, the chassis. So there's a couple different ways you can, we, we can put an engine on the back of it to run a sweet sweeper, or we can run it off of the engine from the from the actual chassis. 
So uh, that's been in the last couple of years that we had that technology for us and, uh, and we're able to, uh, to kind of go down and actually save customers money if they go with one of our, you know, one of one of our sweepers that doesn't require an extra engine. I mean, that's probably a ten thousand dollars savings on a thing. Yeah, once you, I mean, once you start a line, it's a four wheel line. Once you start the line, it's, it's pretty much dedicated to this type of model so that you can uh, pick parts and go. Or? Yeah. So, so this is dedicated to a to a specific um, type of sweeper. There's different models that we run down the line. So this model might be different from. Yeah, so uh, so this is one of our this is one of our models that only requires one engine to run. So this is run off the chassis engine. The one behind it, you can see already see the engine on the back of it. Well, that's one of our bigger models, a truck, totally different, totally different build than this one. I see. So it might that we it might be that we run a fleet down this, um, but uh, you know we 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 it's not it's not that we get an order of fifteen or twenty for each customer. It could be one, it could be three, it could be, you know, two or whatever. Different variables all day long for these guys. Wow. They have about a tack time of about five hours, four hours, depending on the volume that we're running, uh, you know, to move up, you know, per station of, of each one. So Interesting. So regenerative air. Uh, so this is, again, a different a different, uh, a different line on, on the same same line. Same so uh, uh, they don't have one on it yet. So, so, this, is a, so this is air picking up the dirt off the ground. So we've got the, the brooms on the side, push it all into the middle, and then this is called a pickup head. Not assembled yet, but once it's assembled, it's got tubes that come up and it sucks air. This will get the skirts on it so that it sits down so low. So it sits down low, yeah. yeah. And then it, and it sucks the sucks all the debris up into the hopper. Interesting, absolutely interesting. Yeah, and there's the, the a, a final product there, getting ready to come off the line. Uh, looks like it doesn't have everything on it yet, but it's in the last station, so they'll finish it up and then set it off to our audit process so the guys can audit it and make sure it's functioning properly. The test area out here that you run? Yeah, yeah, they test them, they test them down in this area as well now. Yeah. And then the last, go ahead. Personal NASCAR track out there then. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and then uh, this is the last line, so this is our mechanical product. Again, we got, uh, we got elevators and conveyors on the back of this thing that the broom is, is uh, you know, that big broom that you saw earlier when it was pulling out, is throwing it up into the elevator, the conveyor. And then we have a smaller hopper, which is mm, not on it, but it's on, oh, here it is right here. So here's the smaller hopper right here. Again, that's one of the, the two you saw earlier. This is the right. smallest one we have that, that goes up here. This guy can actually lift up off the ground and dump it into a, into a uh, you know, a 10 yard, or wherever they're going to dump it at into a landfill, oh. it comes up pretty far off the ground to, to be able to dump it out. <clears throat> Does Elgin do anything specifically like with snow removal? Do they do just a brush thing, just get it out of the way? No, no stuff? nothing no? with snow. It's, it's all about debris. Uh, you know, we do have areas of the country that run year round, uh, but generally, you know, the snow, it, just, anywhere with snow, they're going to shut down for the season yeah. and then pick it right back up again. You know, usually February, March time frame, they start to. Uh, Start going to town. Uh, yeah. The big final push for probably areas like like us is is when they got to pick up all the leaves. We got all the leaves falling all over the ground. All right. We're sucking up a lot of leaves, and then uh, and then usually the season comes to an end here shortly after everything falls on the ground. And, yeah. You know, I wanted to you know, just you had that mechanical ability going on. I just wondered if they ever dabbled in anything. Yeah, like we've that. never. Yeah, we've never dabbled into that. You know, we've got a. Uh, you know, our corporation is Federal Signal. They dabble into all that, uh, more specifically, you. specifically street sweepers. So, yet hurricanes and these national, yep. you know, emergencies that happen in New York and along the eastern seaboard. And yes. Yeah. The coastal regions, you know, and I wondered if there was anything in that. Yeah. In that, you know, this is a different medium we're messing with. You go get it out of the way, type thing. And yes. What yeah. is this right here? What is this? Uh, so this is the test of the water and the, the function of the sweeper. Yep. So in each area has this. They just have a bigger one over, you know, over in the corner for the other. Here's actually the cab. They're building the cab right now. Can I crawl so up cab, in there? The cab is a purchase part, and and then they build everything on the inside of this. So yeah, you can take a look at it. Uh, need a bloody seat. You don't need a seat. That seat's probably 
super comfortable when it gets in yeah, there, there's right? There's one over here we can look at. It's a finish. This is a finished one. It's ready to go on a sweeper. Just a trainer. It's got two steering wheels. In it. <laughs> Most of them have two. Any side of the street you want to be on. Oh man, that is comfortable. Air ride. Yeah. This tilts. Yeah, and this, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these options that we do come from the operators that are operating these every day. Yeah. You know, we send stuff out to them to to talk to us about what do they need, what do they, you know. Yeah. Being able, issues, yeah, being able to see like right down through here. Yeah. The little stuff. Little makes stuff. A big yeah. difference. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got to think these guys are in these things eight nine hours a day. Yeah. Uh, you know, Living some in of them here. Run twenty four hours. They don't stop. You know, the city of L.A. They just keep going. They they don't stop their fleet. Wow. That concludes our tour with Mr. Jeff Alden. Thank you very much. That was uh, uh, fascinating. Yeah, thanks, sir. Learned a lot. Yep. I saw some processes, some things out there that, you know, I grew up, little kid, you always wonder about these things, you know, how and why, you know, looking at those brushes and sweeping stuff toward the center and then the big brush and how does it vacuum, you know, why do you, why do, you do it that way or why do you build it that way? But walking through here, it all kind of makes perfect sense, but the opportunity to see it, very much appreciated. Yep. Uh, you're with the company six years now. Yes. Uh, business unit manager, that's your title. So yep. tell us about your background. How'd you, how'd you kind of, I mean, this is a cool job, but how'd you walk into it? Uh, so um, <clears throat> it's funny, I, uh, I had uh, a neighbor who worked here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'd moved into a new right. subdivision. I was a recruiter for the military. And, um, you know, he asked me, you know, he saw me in uniform, asked me, what are you, what are you doing? And I yeah. said, well, I'm a recruiter and I'm getting ready to get out of the military. And, uh, he said, uh, you should, you know, come apply, apply. Yeah. come apply at LG Sweeper Company. I didn't know what LG Sweeper Company was. Um, uh, you know, I actually thought it was to run a crew of people actually sweet sweeping. Uh, and then once I looked into it, it was about, you know, manufacturing sweet sweepers. I thought that was very interesting. So, uh, you know, I applied and then I, um, uh, I got uh, the role as a second shift uh, paint supervisor. So I ran their second shift paint for about five months and then moved to first shift. And then I actually ran our four wheel assembly line for about four years. And then just recently last year, got promoted as a business unit manufacturer, uh, business unit manager. Good opportunity to start. You just kind of moved through. And I just kind of moved through different business. departments to learn about the processes and then uh, and then learned enough about it. And now I run, you know, all the manufacturing for, uh, for our plant here. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, so, you know, we talked, I mean, we're, look, let's weld something and everybody's going to be yep. interested and everybody asks, you know, what do they pay? What do they pay? What's the starting level? What's the, For a welder? You, if I want to hire on as a welder, uh, how do I go through the process and, and what am I expected to get starting off? I mean, what, sure. do I, what do I need to have? So a couple different things that, that you can come in a different, a couple different pays. So first off, uh, you know, at this time we're about $19 an hour to start. And that is for a non-certified welder. I mean, you haven't gone through our Elgin certification. You haven't passed our Elgin certification. Um, so when you, when you come here and you apply, you go through an interview, just like, you know, any regular job. Uh, but then we're going to test you. We're going to do some blueprint testing to make sure that you can read blueprints. All right. That's very important for welding. And then once you pass the blueprint uh, test, we'll take you out there and we'll do a widget test. So you'll, you'll put together the part that you actually saw on the blueprint and then you'll weld it with different welds. Uh, if you pass that, uh, you can go into our certification test. So we're going to certify you on, uh, you know, a couple different welds. And then, um, you know, you can start off. If you, if you become certified welder, you'll start off at 20. If you don't certify in that process, you'll start, you'll come in at 19, and then we'll certify you within 90 days, and then you'll get that pay bump to 20. So that's one way. The second way is, is uh, you know, you got to do this regardless uh, of where you come in at. But if you have experience in welding, and you've been welding for years, depending them on the amount of years, you can come up and pay, you know, a couple of dollars more for the yeah, amount okay. of, amount of shift differential, differentials, all that kind of stuff. Sure, we got kind of shift differential. Well, we have shift differentials for everybody. So if you're on second shift, you're going to get a dollar fifty more an hour on top of your on top of your uh, your wage. Um, but if you have experience, if you've got twenty years experience, you're most likely coming in at twenty four dollars an hour to start okay. at least. Good. You know? Because everybody so, asks. That's the first thing everybody asks. Yeah, you know? it's just normal. Yep, normal stuff. You know, um, and there's a response to that. You know. You don't you just come in and apply, start out and pay your dues and work up. Yeah. Just like you did yeah. for the, yep. for the opportunity. So, yeah. Yeah. And definitely you got to start somewhere and, you know, we do, we do take a lot of, uh, a lot of kids from, uh, from fresh out of school. To get, they just got their weld certificates fresh out of school. And we, uh, 
you know. We're, but you're still training, and that's that's oh, yeah. highly yeah. important. You're still yeah. training, and and your your uh, the product cross training different areas. You know, every, that's how you move up. And yeah, I mean, we've got covering. thousands of parts, so it's not like someone's going to come in here and you're not going to weld the same part every day, all day long. So there's a right. lot of variation and you know, a that, lot of ways to learn. That drives a lot of people off right there, is having to do the same thing over and over. They, it does. They yeah, get yeah. bored. They'd be bored. Our generations yeah. have changed over the over the years. Uh, yeah, yeah, big time. Uh, yeah. I'm sitting with amongst some folks over here that are of their you know the elderly uh, yeah. status. <laughs> One of them thinks he's old back there. He's still in his 30s. Right. <laughs> Not he's close. giving me hand signs over there. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in his era right now, you know, the, the, that mentality, I don't want to do the same thing every day. They don't have that patience, you know, and that's just, sure. you know, they can't stick it out. But you said when we were walking through here, you have people in the manufacturing assembly that have been here 20 years. Yeah. Those are the people that know. I mean, they've stuck, they've stuck it out, and they, they, do. they yeah. know those machines inside and out, and I think that's, you know, that's where you're, it's highly beneficial. Apparently, you pay ter take care of the company, take yes. care of the, the personnel, because there's not a lot of changeover. No, that's yeah, good, we, don't, we don't have a lot of changeover. admirable right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah I think I our guess that's 10 years, probably 12 years. I guess that's how you stay in business for 100 and plus years yeah. then, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. Very yeah. nice. Well. Yeah. I've seen the I've seen the Elgin sweepers over the years, you know. But what did I, you know? Again, I was curious about how they were made. Now I got to see it, and I appreciate that. So yeah. thank you very much. No, thank you. Appreciate your service. Yes, sir. thank you. Yeah, it's a great tour. Yep. I don't know what else to ask or say. I'm just, uh, I guess, 11:15, waiting for lunch. You buying lunch today? <laughs> well, no, I'm joking. <laughs> thank you for uh, watching this little episode. I was fascinating for me and uh, our esteemed colleagues as well. I'm Bob Moffat with Let's Weld Something. Peace!